In this video, we will discuss how to insert a gene into a vector. Specifically, the vector we will be discussing is a bacterial plasma because it is easy to grow. There are seven main steps. The first is to purify the DNA with the gene of interest. The second step is to isolate the gene of interest. The third step is to isolate the plasmid from the bacteria. The fourth step is to digest the plasmid with the corresponding restriction enzymes. The fifth step is to purify the digested plasmid. The sixth step is to ligate the digested vector with the isolated gene of interest. And the final step is transformation. The first step is to purify DNA from the organism with the gene of interest using mini, midi, or maxi prep like we did in lab 7. Second is to isolate the gene of interest using one of two options. First, use restriction enzymes directly to cut the gene out of the DNA. If there are no restriction enzyme sites around the gene and or there is not enough DNA isolated, perform PCR using primers designed with restriction enzyme sequences. This will, one, make more copies of the gene of interest, and two, introdu introduce restriction enzyme sites on either side of the gene copies. The purpose of having restriction enzyme sites is so that the gene can be ligated successfully into the plasmid, as will be discussed later. Third is to isolate DNA from the plasmid DNA plasmid from bacteria via mini, midi, or maxi prep. Ensure that the plasmid has a selectable marker such as ampicillin resistance. The fourth step is to digest the plasmid with, restri with restriction enzymes. Note that the restriction enzymes should cut at sites that match the restriction enzyme sites of the isolated gene. If you directly use restriction enzymes to cut the gene out of the DNA, you should use the same restriction enzymes with the plasmid. If you use PCR, the restriction enzymes for the plasmid digest should cut at sequences that match the primer sequences. The fifth main step is to purify the digested plasmid. Separate out the DNA sample using gel electrophoresis. Then cut out the section of the gel with the desired portion of the plasmid and use gel filtration to, se to separate out the agarose. The Kaijin gel extraction kit is one you can use. The sixth step is to ligate the digested vector with the isolated gene of interest. The process of joining separate linear DNA fragments together is called ligation. This is the same process used in DNA replication on the lagging strand in order to connect the Okazaki fragments. In DNA ligation, a covalent bond is formed, specifically a phosphodiester bond between the 3' hydroxyl of one base pair and the 5' phosphate of another base pair. The specific enzyme used is called T4 DNA ligase. This enzyme joins together cohesive segments of DNA fragments that are overhanging. As mentioned before, the cohesive ends are, are formed using the same restriction enzyme to cut off the desired gene of interest and cut open the target plasmid. T4 DNA ligase can also ligate blunt ends, but this usually requires different conditions. Four main ingredients are needed to ligate DNA fragments together. Water, compatible DNA fragments, buffer with ATP, and T4 DNA ligase. After ligation, check to see if the gene was successfully inserted by running the ligation product on a gel, with a negative control being the initial target plasmid before undergoing ligation. If the ligation product is longer than the original plasmid length, it can be inferred that ligation was successful. However, if there is not enough DNA, this check can be performed under, after transformation. The seventh step is transformation. After the ligation step, transformation can be used to amplify the DNA plasmid in which the plasmid is introduced into bacteria where it can be quickly replicated. Grow the bacteria with the plasmid incorporated in a condition that selects for the selectable marker. For example, with an ampicillin resistance marker on the plasmid, the bacteria can grow on ampicillin plates. This ensures that the plasmid is always being replicated and passed down through reproduction. Here is a practical example of this technique by introducing the lice 5 gene into a vector to transform a lice 5 mutant. First, purify DNA from yeast, then PCR using primers that are complementary to the lice 5 gene ends and inserted with the HIND3 restriction enzyme site. Next, isolate the target plasmid from bacteria using mini, midi, or maxi prep. The plasmid should contain the same HIND3 restriction enzyme site as was used to cut out the lice 5 gene from the yeast genome. Digest the target plasmid with the HIND3 restriction enzyme. Then ligate the lice 5 gene into the digested plasmid with T4 DNA ligase. 
confirmed successful ligation of the LIS5 gene by running the ligated product on the gel with the unligated plasmid to compare the lengths. If the ligated product is seen as longer on the gel than the unligated plasmid, continue on the transformation by heat shocking the LIS5 mutants. Finally, grow the yeast on the YAPD and then spread onto the COM-LIS plates for selection of the transformants.